Welcome to a special edition of Raving Ryan with ESPN Sports Center anchor Darren Haynes. Welcome to Raving Ryan. I'm here with ESPN Sports anchor Darren Haynes. Darren, how are you? I'm good today. Thank you for having me on your show, Ryan. I'm Darren, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and how you ended up here at ESPN? Uh, it was a long journey, uh, 10 years to, to get here. Started off with, with a job where I basically made minimum wage. Uh, but I, I was really, really hungry, and I tried to network as much as possible. Never threw away a business card, uh, kept every single phone number, uh, and stayed up late at night putting together a lot of resume tapes to try to get jobs wherever. Then eventually I went from Alpena, Michigan, Market 208, which is one of the smallest cities, to uh, Harlingen, Texas, to San Antonio, Texas, to Boston, and then to here. So I understand along the way you were told multiple times that the broadcasting business is too hard and you never make it. What would you like to say to those people that said that you would never make it here? Oh, wow. Wow. So you touched something really deep there. Because, um, yeah, I'll never forget that guy who told me that I'll never make it. Um, I tell people all the time that don't ever let someone tell you that you can't accomplish something. When I look at you sitting here right now, you remind me of myself when I first started. And I hope no one ever tells you that you'll never make it to ESPN. Um, you got to kind of have you, your eyes, like, you got to be like a horse with blinders. Know where you want to go and don't worry about what's on the left and the right side of you. I, I kind of tell people sometimes the, the journey is almost like when you leave your house and go to school. You leave your house, you're in a car, you see where you're, where you're coming from, but you don't see where you're going. And then along the road, you may have like these bumps, potholes, maybe there's a roadblock, you have a detour, but you know you're going to school. So forget about what everybody else is saying. They're just potholes and speed bumps. Know for a fact that you're going to school. Look at your job, look at your career or your goal the same way. Know that you're going to get there. Okay, so you played high school, you played football in high school at Amity, then in college at UNA. A long time ago, Ryan. <laughs> a long time ago. So, we know, so you played football, so we know you know, know a tremendous amount about football. But at sports, then you have to know everything about pretty much every major sport in America. So how hard was it to learn like, basically everything about all the sports in the United States? Uh, I can say it was hard, but it's, it's what you have to do to survive in this business. And I, I give people always the example of, I, I, I grew up, I, when I grew up, I wasn't a hockey fan. But on sports center, we have to know our hockey. So it took me about two and a half to three weeks where I copied and pasted every single player on every hockey team, put it on, put it on YouTube, and I listened to the way they pronounced their name. And I wrote it down so I can know every single hockey player's name. And now I have to question, like, hey, how do you pronounce it? Or go on TV and pronounce the guy's name the wrong yeah. way. Because if you say it wrong, uh, yeah, it's, that's, that's not a good look. Um, so it, it, it's hard work, but I, it's Hard work pays off, and when, when you know your stuff, you have fun on SportsCenter. I have a blast. So, Darren, you've been on SportsCenter for over, over a year now, and your ratings are very good. You say that you're living the dream now, but have you ever thought about being one of ESPN's big men like Chris Berman or John Anderson? <laughs> Chris Berman and I, uh, we just took a picture last week, and I was thinking, I was like, wow, I'm, I'm probably going to look at this picture years down the road. Uh, like, wow, that's when I just started, and maybe look at me now. Uh, when you look up to those guys, it's almost surreal because you grew up watching them, and now you work alongside them. And they're legends, and you see how good they are, but it also inspires you on how far you can actually go. Because Chris Berman would tell me that he started off on like some show at 3 a.m. or something like that. It was, it was when everybody was asleep. So everyone had to, everybody had to start off somewhere. And that's what he told me, and it's like, man, okay, if I'm in that position where I'm kind of just in the door. That's where Chris Berman started. I can get there one day. I know a lot of viewers would like to know what goes behind, behind the scenes in Sports Center. Can you tell us a little bit about what goes behind the scenes at Sports Center, what your average day is like? Uh, well, I wake up, we get a, a tons of emails, a hot list, and what they call notes, stats, and trends, but it basically tells us everything that's going on in news. Uh, on top of that, if I have a Sports Center show coming up, I know that I have basketball games, football games. So I need to know what did that team do in their previous game, but also, too, what to expect in their upcoming game. 
So I read both the recap and also the previews and have everything that I need to know, need to know, to know like, okay, I have all the background informa information for an example of Kobe Bryant. Then come up with ideas. This is during the daytime. This is not even at work yet. Coming, coming up with ideas, okay, how can I do maybe a unique lead-in for Kobe Bryant? Then when I have the ideas, I put them together and I email my producer. Then we go to the meeting. The producer already has the, the ideas that I came up with. Now I have to sell my idea to everybody in the meeting. Then we go from our meeting to our show pod where we write and we come up with all di maybe different ideas, um, different elements in the show. All that hard work throughout the day. So, um... Since you cover sports all the time, you must love watching them. What is your favorite sport to watch, and do you have any favorite teams? Uh, my favorite sport to watch is definitely football. I played high school, played college ball. Uh, that's, that, I love watching football, but it's different. It's not like in the past where I'm like, yeah, go Giants. Now it's almost like when I used to play, that free safety is over top of the tight end, so that linebacker must be blitzing. I look at it in a different way, but it's still fun. I love when running backs have, have, have big games. Um, but even though I'm not a Giants, Knicks, Yankees fan uh, anymore, or Notre Dame fan, I am a die-hard sit in my lucky seat. Don't call me during the game. I can't eat during the game until the game is over. Talk to my dad after the game is over for our own little analysis. Uh, die-hard UConn basketball fan. Took a while to get there. And you know what they're the Huskies this year about how they're doing and, like, about Kevin Alley and how his um – Plans are? Uh, Kevin Ollie's doing, doing a great job. I, I, I love the team this year because uh, they, they seem well balanced. Um, we're still looking for like that go-to guy though, um, but we seem, we seem well balanced. I was wondering what's going to happen when Ryan Boatwright left because that was like our go-to guy. But now we have a bunch of guys who can actually score and some guys down low and we have a deep bench. Um, it's almost like a, I don't want to say it's like the platoon system like Kentucky last year, um, but it's nice when you take out the starting five, and then you bring in reserves who are like juniors and seniors on the team. And going back to NFL, do you think anybody that is really notable this year may be winning the Super Bowl? But you're trying to give me, you want a prediction out of me on who I think is going to win. <laughs> you know what, I'm going to go out on, on a limb because I have a few friends that, that play for them. The Carolina Panthers are going to win the Super Bowl. They're going to lose. They're going to lose one time this during a regular season, but I'm going to say the Carolina Panthers are going to win the Super Bowl. I can't believe I just said that, but I'm going to say that. You're going to show this video. You're going to show this video when, 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 if, huh? You, you think it's going to lose to the Giants? Well, that's a crazy division. Um, the Giants need to make the playoffs first, but the way that, that that division is, it's still up for grabs for everybody. I mean, the Cowboys are like, I think, a couple games out. Um, so, because you are a Giants fan, and I am a back in the day Giants fan, so they still have a lot of work to do before they want to talk about playing the Carolina Panthers in the playoffs. So I've known you, I know you lived in Connecticut for a while, and Connecticut is really known for its pizza so, uh, throughout New Haven in the state. Since, so what, do you have a favorite um, pizza place in Sal's. Connecticut? Sal's. you kidding me? <laughs> Sal's Pizza. Yeah, Sal's Pizza? Yeah. Yeah, Sal's Pizza. I mean, I had it. My dad had it. Probably my dad, dad had it. Um, yeah, Sal's Pizza all, all day, every day, and then go across the street and get some nice comedy. And do you have a favorite pizza? Uh, I like sausage. Just plain sausage. I don't like a whole bunch of stuff on there, so just sausage and cheese. And th there are also many great television shows out there and movies like sports. Any um, sports or movies and television shows you like? Uh, you know what? I, I don't watch that much TV anymore. Uh, I, I watch Scandal, but other than that, I'm watching a lot of games. Um, and yeah, I'm watching a lot of games. Well, I know the new uh, Rocky movie just came out. So I did yeah. not see Creed yet. I, I will see Creed in the next seven days. I guarantee that. Um, but as a kid growing up who watched every single Rocky episode and remember when Apollo Creed lost to Drago and when the whole funeral of Creed and then all of a sudden you see like his little son. Oh yeah, I'm kind of pumped up to watch that. You're too young for that, Ryan. <laughs> So um, there are many um, ESPN sports anchors, but do you like who? Who do you really like going on with? Uh, oh, that's that's tough. Oh, that's really tough. I don't. Everybody's kind of fun. Um, that's t that's a tough question. I know Hakeem Dermish and I. We always joke around, um, so we have a good time on air. But everybody, everybody I anchor, it's it's 
it's it's a lot of it's a lot of fun with everybody. That's hard. that's tough. It's tough to pick. Have you ever been on air with Stuart Scott? Uh, I well, here's my only story about Stuart Scott. I did not anchor with Stuart Scott. But when my 8 o'clock ended at 11, Stuart Scott came on at 11. And this is the old Sports Center set. And he walked in and he was like, Get out my seat, young player. <laughs> and it was one of those moments where, if you, if you watch like the, the Arnold Palmer commercial with, the, with Scott Van Pelt and the lemonade and the tea, where you're just kind of like sitting there like, Dude, that was awesome. Like, I don't care if he says, Get out of my seat, young player. Like, that was a, that was a cool moment. He kicked me out of my seat, but that go, that's in my memory for life. And I know you've worked uh, on previous um, news stations covering sports in like Boston and San Antonio. Do you have like a favorite, what's your favorite interview you've done with um, an athlete? Probably, that's tough. David Ortiz and, and Tom Brady were two really, really good ones. David Ortiz, if you get him to, ha to have fun, he is hilarious. But I'm going to put that to the side, and I'm going to go with Greg Popovich for the Spurs because he'll make you feel so uncomfortable. But if you fire back at him, it's almost like you're, it's like a battle. And they actually make it pretty fun and entertaining. Um, and Greg Popovich is not the easiest interview. Head coach of the Spurs. Yeah. Um, and for people that are looking into oh, your- Oh wait, Magic Johnson was pretty good. I do remember that, yeah. So I know a lot of people that are interested in your career. Did you like have any internships before you started? I interned at WTNH Channel 8. New Haven, Connecticut, and then News 12 in Norwalk, Connecticut, were my two internships. And a question a bunch of people know, have you ever been to the ESPYs before? I have not. I am on that long, long waiting list. Hopefully I can, I can go to the ESPYs one day. And um, what, I think some people would like to know, what, you do, what, do you, what do you do in commercial breaks? What do I do during commercial breaks besides for giving Nicole Briscoe some of my mother's sweet potato pie, text my mom if she's watching, uh, take a picture, and then throw it on Facebook. Uh, besides that, uh, most of the time it's, hey, these games are ending. I need a recap for this game. Uh, who made this basket? How many points did he have? How many rebounds did he have? Uh, what's the pronunciation of this guy's name? So the, or. In, they're in our ear, hey, we have this coming up next, or this coming up next. Darren, do you have this? You have this interview coming up after this particular highlight. So it's actually, uh, it's, it's pretty busy because we're preparing for our next block. But if there is a slow time, we break out the sweet potato pie and, <laughs> and, and text my mom. So I know you grew up in the Northeast, and you probably didn't watch much NASCAR. But do you, like, watch NASCAR now and have to cover it? Uh, yeah, it was one of those things where I, I had to learn NASCAR. I was actually fortunate to go down to... Charlotte, what we called our NASCAR immersion, and I was teamed up with Jimmy Johnson. Matter of fact, I was working for T Jimmy Johnson, um, and I was able to go follow him around, learn how everything, is, what takes place behind the, seat, the scenes at NASCAR. And when you're there and you actually drive the NASCAR, the, one of the cars around the, the track in Charlotte, you grow, grow a great appreciation for it. So now you're into it. Um, I think one of the coolest things, though, you get all these Division One athletes, their pit crew, they're all former athletes. The guy who carries the gas tank are like tight ends because they're tall. They can carry. They can put the gas tank in. The running backs and linebackers are the guys who can have good footwork. They can run around the car really quickly with, with a heavy object. And then you have the hockey players and the baseball players are the guys who, who take the bolts out because they have good hand-eye coordination. I think that's the coolest thing. I, I, I would try that out if, I, if, if, if I'm just getting out of college playing football. And um, I know you do Sports Center, but do you do any like um, reporting for ESPN and for, in other places? Uh, I have some future stuff that I'm I'm working on right now, reporting wise. But other than that, um, if it's like uh, NBA Tonight, I host NBA Tonight. But uh, but mainly I'm a I'm a Sports Center anchor, and that's the thing that I kind of want to build as my own, and then we'll see where we go from there. And as we close up, what's the best thing you like about ESPN? And you have fun. And you get paid to have fun. What other job do you get paid to have fun? <laughs> That's Sports Center. Okay, I'd like to thank you, Darren, for coming on today. And please follow us on Twitter at RavingRyan1 and on Instagram at RavingRyan1. And please subscribe. Thanks for watching. Ryan, subscribe.
And as Darren just said, please hit that red subscribe button right below me. Also, I'd like to thank my executive producer, Sam Anastasio, for all of his hard work and coming to me with all the interviews. Sam, thank you, and thank you for watching.